Good morning, it's Wednesday, June 14th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Tough Choices, and our scriptures from Genesis, chapter 18. So the Lord told Abraham, I have heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. I am going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. The other men turned and headed towards Sodom, but the Lord remained with Abraham. Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? Suppose you find fifty righteous people living there in the city. Will you still sweep it away and not spare it for their sakes? Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous along with the wicked. Why would you be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same? Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And the Lord replied, If I find fifty righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again, Since I have begun, let me speak further to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes. Suppose there are only forty-five righteous people rather than fifty. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five righteous people there. Then Abraham pressed his request further. Suppose there are only forty. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of the forty. Please don't be angry, my Lord, Abraham pleaded. Let me speak. Suppose only thirty righteous people are found. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it if I find thirty. Then Abraham said, Since I have dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Suppose there are only twenty. And the Lord replied, Then I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. Finally, Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me if I speak one more time. Suppose only ten are found there. And the Lord replied, Then I will not destroy it for the sake of the ten. When the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way, and Abraham returned to his tent. It was a tough decision all the way around. For Abraham, the problem was his nephew, Lot. He was living there. For the Lord God, there were perhaps more than a hundred thousand of his loved ones, including Lot. Abraham made his case, narrowing the decision from fifty righteous people to ten, probably equal to Lot's family. For the Lord, the difference between destroying a city and even one person did not change the ethical dilemma. Ending a life is exactly opposite of the creative character of God. He gives life. Yet, choosing against God's ways of life-giving, we call it sin, is that dangerous freedom known as free will. I'm as certain as a human can be that God, looking down on Sodom and Gomorrah, was torn with grief over what he knew would end in their destruction. The rest of the story tells us that God did not give up on them. The Lord sent angels to Sodom, giving the entire city a chance to repent, and they didn't. Every retelling of this account ends with God as the destroyer. But that's not the full story. Destruction came upon the citizens of Sodom because they used God's gracious gift of free will to choose their evil wickedness over God's righteousness. God had warned and given them every opportunity to be saved. They wouldn't. And the tough choice brought fire from above. In the end, they committed eternal suicide rather than confess their evil choice. That same thing has never ceased happening from the moment Cain lifted a rock against Abel, and it happens every day man draws breath. For you today, the Holy Scriptures are often referred to as the good news, because God's mercy and grace gave us a Savior on a cross, taking our punishment so we could be saved. But the quote-unquote good news is only good because there is also evil. 
The very definition of either good or evil is the dividing line between the two. So hear and consider what Jesus said about all of it and the choice we have. John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Satan the thief, or Jesus the giver, we all have that choice. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.